here with the Tag and Brando podcast. Taggart, how are we doing? Doing okay, man. How are you doing? <laughs> I am so excited. Excited for our fourth in a series of game show type games. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're new to the podcast, uh, every once in a while, Taggart and I will just, you know, kind of do a little quiz on each other, you know, something that we find is fun and we hope you guys play along at home or car or probably at home. You're all at home now. (laughs) 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 let's face it that's part of what we're doing this exactly (laughs) stuck at home and you know we want to just bring a little bit of fun a little bit of joy and uh also just some some mind noodlers out there for you right absolutely so tagger what do we got today all right well I, i i have a game that i have coined uh academic pandemic Ooh! In, in which I'm gonna test your academic pandemic. Your <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna test your limited knowledge on uh, Ooh, historic. Ow. Histor- <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was not supposed to be a dig uh, <laughs> on your uh, knowledge of historic uh, world pandemics. Okay, so diseases from around the world. Here we go. That's right. <laughs> so what what I got here is I got three rounds. Three rounds, each containing three questions. Um, each round will be um, one pandemic versus a, another. Okay. So A pandemic versus B pandemic. Uh, the answers okay. to the questions can either be pandemic A or pandemic B or both. But no neither. But no neithers, right. Okay, good. It will be a combination of said two pandemics. That is the worst when it's like all the above or none of the above. And you're like, what am I even doing here? (laughs) (laughs) Why would it be none of the above? I hate those questions because you think like, because you read them in order. So it's going to be like, oh, A, A sounds pretty good. Ooh, B, uh, uh, C. Oh, all of the above. Oh, man. Now I'm thinking it could be all of the above. None of the above. What the F? I was feeling really good about A. Now I hate it. I hate A. <laughs> I'm not going to say this test isn't about how well you could take tests. Because I'm like, but, <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> but uh, uh, hopefully, uh, the whole point of this is hopefully we learn a little bit more about diseases that we don't necessarily <laughs> Uh, face these days but uh, but uh, so anyways after each question uh, if you're interested I can give you a little nugget about what that question was about or or the uh, specific characteristic of that pandemic so maybe we can learn something as well as just say yes or no so dude a little little karma San Diego style I want to get educated and win great prizes like Well, there's no prizes here, so I guess just education. (laughs) All right. Well, that's 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 a great prize in and of itself. Yes, I am ready. I am ready ready to roll. Do I cough cough once for yes and cough twice for no? No, let's not make it that complicated. (laughs) Since neither of these are yes no questions. Um, Neither, none of. All of the above. I love how you just changed the pronunciation. <laughs> neither. Neither. You know what? Not even going there. <laughs> All right. So round one. Ooh. Round one is uh, going to be the uh, bubonic plague versus the plague of Justinian. Ooh, okay. That's, All right. I think an Are ancient you... Romanish, but Ooh. I don't know. Ooh, so you might have some familiarity with either of these, or maybe okay. one in particular. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> or at least a lot of the listeners will probably just have some knowledge on one of these. So remember, these answers can be A, B, or both. Um, so Got it. Let's dive in. First question. Which plague originated or was said to have been... Uh, carried 
by rats uh, who were infected or who carried fleas that were infected with the plague that were uh, distributed on merchant ships. I am definitely thinking the bubonic plague is all rat based. Uh, so I'm going to say first one bubonic. Mm, that is a very good guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right off the bat, this is a both. Oh, all right. Fair enough. <laughs> so this, these, uh, yeah. So we'll, 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 we'll jump back and give it a little bit more specifics here. Let's keep going on okay. the black. Same, same three or same Justinian. two. Yes. Okay. Still on the same okay. two here. So number two, this plague. Now, I'm going to butcher this because my Latin <laughs> is not so good. Uh, <laughs> number two here. This plague uh, originated or is caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis. Yersinia pestis. I was going to give you credit because we don't really know what Latin sounded like, but Yersinia pestis. So, I mean, pest. Obviously, we established mm. that with the rats, so that doesn't give anything away. Uh, Eusidius Pestis. I'm going to say just Justinian. Justinian? Is that even right? Justinian? That's yeah. how I'm pronouncing it. <laughs> All right. I'm pronouncing it. <laughs> um, also a good guess. The Plague of Justinian is a very good guess because, again, surprise, it's both. Ah, uh, this is just the same plague all of over again. <laughs> <laughs> it's technically Trick. Trick. not the same plague, but interesting enough, both are caused by the same bacterium, um, and so there are <laughs> there are links to both, but um, but they are not the same thing, which is very interesting. Anyways, oh man, um, this this is the worst third question. <laughs> <laughs> I've guessed the first one, I've guessed the second one, but it's been both both times. <laughs> So let's what? get into the third one. Here we this go. This is the whole how to take a test crap. Anyway, sorry. Go. I'm sorry. I told you. <laughs> this is how this it is might not go. not about how to take a test. <laughs> this is how it might go. So, okay. Question number three. Some experts estimate uh, that over 50% of Europe's population died due to this plague. I'm going bubonic. Ooh. So good. So okay. good. But. Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> technically both. Oh, gosh. Dang it. <laughs> this is the same plague. I knew it. It's not. Oh. So, anyways, uh, let me give you a little background. So, the plague of, Just <laughs> the plague of Justinian. Um, occurred the ma the major occurrence was between 541 and 542 AD okay just so the fall of it, Rome yeah right um and it is said that this plague may have played a factor in the fall of Rome so thank you for bringing that up i would have i would have glazed over that point um mm. this plague also had reoccurrence through the 8th century up to about 750 AD continue okay. to pop back up every now and then. Now they say from that full time period, they estimate that um, 25 to five, uh, 25 to 100 million people died <laughs> during those two centuries. That is a swing. <laughs> Which, 25 to 100. <laughs> and it's a big amount, but it estimates out to about half of Europe's population at the time of the first outbreak. So there's a little asterisk. For both. But, <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Um, so that's that. So, but still, if we're saying upward numbers, 100 million people, there's no small right. bananas. In 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 the plague carried on bananas. Yeah, in the pandemics of all the pandemics, the plague of Justinian ranks number four as the worst. Okay. Um, 
The Black Plague, of course, was one that we're most familiar with, resulted in 75 to 200 million death. That's, again, that's about the same swing. <laughs> yeah. It, exactly. It, <laughs> you see that history doesn't know the specifics on a lot of this stuff. But, they're they're uh, basically saying, like, well, if the pop, we know it killed about 50%. So either the population was between 150 to 400, so we're just going to say it's somewhere in between there. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and then most estimates that I saw really – said now we they thought it was uh, you know around 50 percent though this quote that i have written down said 30 percent to 60 (laughs) percent okay fair again again a range but Mm -hmm. um but i read a couple of articles that said that were really pretty firm on the 50 percent which is why i wrote the question as i did and the bubonic plague is interesting took 200 years just uh, for Europe to recoup their numbers of deaths that they had due to the plague. So what is the so Justinian is you know sixth uh, century to eighth century? What was the it that was um, the bubonic plague was like the sixteen hundreds, right? Yeah, it was the uh, London was, fire kind of killed a lot of the rats. Yeah, I'm sorry, everything. I didn't write that down, mm-hmm. but I can look it up real quick. It was. Yeah, it's in the mid fifteen hundreds. Uh, mm-hmm. Black plague. <laughs> <laughs> Black plague time frame. Because yeah, it's definitely so. So we we are establishing that these are two different plagues, but it is the same. It is the same disease, just. In different centuries. Right, right. Okay. Now, and the um, numbers I gave you for the Black Plague were the ones from Eurasia, from uh, Europe and Asia. Mm-hmm. Now, the... Oh, we know what Eurasia is. You know. <laughs> and a lot... And uh, the Black Plague uh, actually, excuse me, is before that. 13, 1300s. 13, 1331 to 34 is about... No. Well, or forty six to fifty three. They're not entirely sure, but <laughs> right. uh, a couple of different things. sketchy so, records back then. Okay, yeah, you know they didn't write things down. So, so, anyways, yeah, I thought very interesting because yes, the origin the same bacteria, different different deals, um, but same carrier mechanism, same devastating right. results uh, at different time periods and uh of course the second one we don't know that well so there you go round one over round one okay all right let's I move on not even 50 percent of that i got zero <laughs> well technically, no technically you i got did get 50 percent on all of them <laughs> all right <laughs> nailed let's it. look at it that way <laughs> All right, I so, got somewhere between seventy-five and two hundred percent. You were uh, take it this way: you weren't wrong ever. Oh, that's fair, right? All right, right. Um, okay, so here we go. So this is round two. This is the Spanish flu versus mm. the swine flu. Ooh, okay, okay, all right. All right. All right. H one N one. All right, here we go. Oh, see now, don't don't, don't get ahead of me now. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> don't get ahead of me. All right. Question one: <laughs> Which is caused by a strain of the H one N one influenza virus? Ooh, nice. I'm gonna say. Oh man, if this is a freaking ball thing, pissed. I'm gonna say swine flu. You are correct, but it's also the Spanish flu. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I promise not all of them will be. <laughs> but when researching uh. these, I thought it very interesting that uh, there was uh, quite a few, or the there was Roberts. a few, mm-hmm. that that had uh, similar backgrounds. Now, now the Spanish flu uh, was a true H1N1 strain. 
where okay. the swine flu is technically a a different strain altogether. Um, uh, the the initial one was I think an H three N two version of the H one N one virus, which was actually the swine flu. So, um, so there you go. Okay, so I did get that one wrong, straight up. <laughs> technically not, because it is a strain of H one N one, and right. and so it is said, and okay. so it is. All right. Ready. Question. Number dos. Two this is Spanish okay. for round two. Question two. <laughs> which vir- or, or which uh, they're flus. Which right. virus? That's fair. Uh, which? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Which uh, pandemic infected the higher number of people? Hint of this cannot be both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, using superlative or uh, <laughs> I guess that's not you said higher or not highest. We'll say highest. Okay. Uh I will say the Spanish flu. Ah Influenza Española. Also um, interesting here about this, the Spanish flu. Oh, wait, hold on. Is it because the Spanish flu was longer ago, so there was less people? Now H1, or now the swine flu is more people because population, but it isn't as bad in terms of, po- of proportion? Ah, now you're thinking. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> so it is estimated that the Spanish flu infected five. Hundred billion people. Now, oh, wow. now this is be- Spanish flu is in early nineteen hundreds. Mm-hmm. Um, this is estimated to about a third of the world's population being affected by this virus. Mm-hmm. But the swine flu actually estimated to. Um, Infect 700 million to 1.4 billion people. Billion? Billion. Contracted the virus. But the interesting thing about it is that it only... I hit my nose on my mic. Yeah? Because it's interesting. I I came into my mic and I like smacked my nose into it. Huh? (laughs) Billion? Though it's estimated that only 150,000 uh, 150, to 575,000 fatalities actually occurred from the swine flu, uh, which is, of course, less than the Spanish flu, which was 50 million deaths. Hmm. So, um, so tons more people got it, just better health care. And right. When such. this is also an interesting fact, when swine flu was said and done, they went back and researched the numbers and realized that the 150 to 575 pretty much lined up to the amount of deaths of a seasonal flu season, which is about 250 to 500 deaths annually. Mm-hmm. So it really wasn't any worse than a regular flu season, though, of course, it was like twice, you know, you had your regular flu season and your flying, your swine flu season. So, Oh, double um, duty. All right. So that's why it was a pandemic versus, you know, the, the flu didn't take the year off. That's all. So anyways, right. um, <laughs> so yeah, interesting. So here we go. So that was question number two, question number three on round two. Okay. Which diseases pandemic lasted two years? So Spanish flu lasted two years or swine flu lasted two years. Correct. (sighs) Both. I would almost give you both. (laughs) (laughs) You're doing so terribly. (laughs) You're not. You're doing fine. Um, because it's almost oh a trick question. The swine, the the Spanish flu, 
is estimated uh, to have occurred between ni- uh, during 1918 and 1919. Mm-hmm. Though some people said that it, it the pandemic stretched into 1920. Um, but most people give it those two years. All right. Mm-hmm. So, and swine flu lasted. Oh, let me get the exact numbers here. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Come on, Ziggy. Ziggy says uh, you got to go back and fix, <laughs> fix H1N1. <clears throat> um, where is it? Oh, sorry. Ah. Lasted from January 2009 to August 2009. Tan. So almost two years. Basically, it's both. So good I'm job. Saying you, you I'm saying you average them to together. You. you average them together at two years. There you go. Absolutely. I give it to you. That was <laughs> All right. that was kind of a jerk question. Sorry. <clears throat> um, so um I'm gonna ask you a question. Please. Flu shot. Every year, on occasion, never. What's your what's your vaccination record there? I am not very good at getting it. Okay. If I take my child to get it, then I'm like, oh, yeah, let me have that. (laughs) (laughs) That's kind of how that breaks down. All right. So. um, I. One sec. I have to. Yes. um, So when I was in college, I went and did a medical research study for uh, an alternate version of the... Wow, I cannot talk right now. You're doing Um, (laughs) Yeah, an alternate version of the uh, flu vaccine. And um, because it's cultivated in eggs. Uh Uh-huh. And so a lot of people who are allergic to chicken eggs can't get Mm. the flu vaccine right and so they cultivate it in the spleen of the african green monkey nice and that's what i was inoculated with and so and how did that go for you it was fine i got a couple hundred bucks <laughs> <laughs> i don't didn't i didn't have any year? it didn't have any symptoms and <clears throat> you know you know medical <laughs> science moved on Move nice. forward that day, <laughs> um, but they yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, there, there's, there's hope out there. Hope for those that are allergic to the flu vaccine. Nice. Just so everybody knows. Well, thanks for that tidbit of information. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but awesome. I haven't gotten a, I haven't gotten a flu shot since. So <laughs> <laughs> probably they're not paying me. I'm not getting it. Uh, I don't know if this is your next topic, but I also have tested uh, smallpox vaccine. So oh, yeah, I'm also pretty pretty happy about that. Nice. That I did well, not get smallpox from it. Well, before we move on to round three, I wanted to mention something that I found interesting when looking at the Spanish and the swine flus. Um, we. Uh, do you recall why we called it the swine flu? I don't know that as much as I think I know why we call it the Spanish flu. <laughs> so, no. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if I have the information on the Spanish flu. So, why do you, why do we call it the Spanish flu? The Spanish flu, I believe, was, uh, as you said, you know, infecting uh, quite a number of people. Uh, but Spain was the first one to like report it in high amount, and so that's why it was called the Spanish flu, even though it wasn't, it didn't originate in Spain. I believe it originated. Ooh, I do. I'm gonna call a country out, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but that's that's my understanding. Is it uh, it it <clears throat> plenty of cases were seen in other countries throughout Europe, but um, Spain was the first one to be like, all right, we're owning this. We have this many. Anybody else got this? And they're like, Ooh, Spanish people have the flu. Oh, you mean the thing that we all have? Oh, got it. Yeah. <laughs> but it kind of got branded that way. Crazy. So anyway. Well, it was the early 1900s. That's yeah. kind of how things went. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So as the swine flu goes, the um, like I mentioned before, that it was a new strain of H1N1, which uh, is said to have been re the result of a previous triple reassortment of bird, swine, and human flu, uh, flu viruses, Ooh. which then further combined with the Eurasian pig flu virus. Pig which, flu. <laughs> which then... Um, which then caused the issue. So, yeah. So the the interesting thing there with that is that it being H1N1, it is somewhat of a descendant of the Spanish flu. It's the same virus. Um, and back in the days of the Spanish flu, there was results or there were reports as well of a lot of pigs mm -hmm. getting sick as well. Um, oh, okay. which we now purport to be the same virus because pigs can get it and, uh, you know, get sick by it as well, which is why. Anyways, um, though initially they think that the Spanish flu, um, H1N1 virus, had been combined with genes of avian origin, so some kind of bird um Jeez Louise, man. This initially yeah. caused the the Spanish flu, which then, you know, resorted and mutated and whatever. And, and then uh, we got it. Pigs probably got it from us. That's what they say. We got it from the birds. And then the, and then the <laughs> pigs probably got it from us. And then the pigs and the birds and the humans virus all got together. And then we got sick from all of that later again. So, um, wow. Crazy. Crazy. Viruses um, are punks, dude. They yes, very much so. Um, so I went uh, to history.com just real quick, only on the Spanish flu. Uh -huh. And <clears throat> it's because um Spain was uh one of the neutral countries during World War One, and so it had you know, it didn't have censored press mm. as the other countries did, and they weren't wanting to report like, hey, we just had this many people die from this thing and you know, have like, oh, the allies are doing better, whatever. So they, and then the king of Spain got it. And so the death tolls and right. the fact that the royalty was reporting that they, that's, they're like, oh, but it's likely to have originated in another place. It just, that it got the most press from Spain. Right. So, you say that now yeah. and that triggers it. I didn't write that down, but I was like, I do remember the Spanish monarch getting it. So nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, good Google. Thanks. <laughs> Are right. you ready? Th okay. Round I, three. Man, I am shooting. On, <laughs> I'm firing on all cylinders here. This is <laughs> definitely. All right. What do we got? What are our two contenders for this round? Surprise, surprise. You mentioned it earlier. We got smallpox. Yeah. And, yeah. Versus the yellow fever. Ooh, jungle fever. No, yellow. Anyway, that's different. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, let's look at question number 1. This disease was carried to the new world due to exploration and settling in those new areas. Oh, are you kidding me? That has to be a both. Yeah. Okay. You <laughs> got a both. You got that's, one. That's how anything gets around. <laughs> Just like <laughs> Oh, new area? <coughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Excuse me. What was your name? <laughs> so you're not wrong. You're absolutely okay. right. That's definitely how disease goes. Somebody carries it to your house, and they've now explored to your house and have – right? It <laughs> moves with people. <laughs> yes. But but this is mostly you know referring to the, the big – exploration movement back in whatever times that you know mm -hmm. uh, the 1500s um where uh you know smallpox of course is uh is. very well known to have wiped out a lot of the uh native americans here and in other places mm -hmm. in the aborigines in africa in, in australia and 
and mm-hmm. of course yellow fever they think mostly came over once things were settled here and the slave trade started um so yeah yeah thanks so, a lot so yeah anyways so that's that's that um though oh so i got the one right totally you nice. got one right absolutely okay. absolutely let's look at number two okay this disease is thought to have originated in africa uh, I'm gonna say, oof. I'm gonna say yellow fever. Yellow fever is correct. I think I kind of gave this to you just a second ago, but you might not have. Well, I mean, it's that. always one of those like trick, you know, because smallpox. Right. You you think of Europe, you think about it, but could it have been somewhere? Right. Else? Well, yeah. and and there's discrepancy with that. So with this is almost a both. The earliest. Mm-hmm. Um, the earliest said case of smallpox has been traced back to Egypt mm-hmm. uh, because they were able to actually examine uh, a mummy that, that looked as if they enough. had mm-hmm. smallpox, right? Um, though there are descriptions of of this and so then that's that's when was that i think that uh, did i write that down um (laughs) i actually am not i don't remember if i did or not um i want to say sixth or seventh century okay egypt but uh, but there is description of the dis- of what we think was the disease written description um, as early as the fourth century in China. So there Ooh. is there is some okay. thought that maybe it has come from China, but then there's some discre- you know then the, they don't know whether they can credit that writing or not as mm-hmm. actually being smallpox. So they don't they don't really know, but. Uh, but smallpox is old. Yes. Very, very old. Yes. And yellow fever is also pretty old, but um, not that old. Okay. So, gosh, we're almost we're almost at the end here. And I can, this is it. Oh, my goodness. Just okay. For all the marbles. So, let's see if you can get a cl- clean sweep on the two diseases that are the most different, smallpox and yellow fever. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> number, th- number three, which disease is currently on the rise? Oh, uh, I'm going to say, oh, man. I'm going to say yellow fever because I'm pretty sure smallpox has been largely eradicated except for in maybe like the the reason I got the smallpox vaccine was they were testing it for the military in case uh-huh. somebody tried to weaponize it. So I'm going to say yellow fever. Oh. You are correct, sir. Boom. Sucker. Since, since the 1980s. Oh, I just lost my thing. Since <laughs> since the 1980s, the number of cases of yellow fever have been increasing, um, and it is interesting that it's mostly from Africa. Uh huh. Those cases seem to be rising more than anywhere else, which is very interesting, being the supposed origin of this disease. It's believed, right. yeah. It's believed. So to be, I mean, you would think that people there are more accustomed to it, like they've gone through right. generations of, um, and everything like that. So maybe it's, you know, that immunity, that herd immunity, has dipped back down. Right. Exactly. And it's interesting enough that an uh, that uh, early earlier on in the pandemic of uh, yellow fever. 
there was quite a good population of Africa that were naturally immune, immune due mm-hmm. to their increased um, exposure to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, it, uh, you know, they believe that fewer people are being immune uh, due to <laughs> due to more people living in cities, more people moving around frequently and changing climates uh, and, uh, you know, changing from climb to climb, as well as changing global climates are increasing the uh, habitat of the mosquito, which is the uh, tool that distributes the virus to humans, mosquitoes, which is why mm-hmm. it, it it's thought of as a tropical disease because, um, you know, water, mosquitoes, you get it, warm temperatures. Breed more mosquitoes. So, yeah. Um, and you were also right about Spanish flu. The or Spanish flu. We're back to Spanish flu. Um, small smallpox is one of two infectious diseases that has been completely eradicated from the earth. Um, and so it's interesting that you were say that they were would weaponize Spanish flu. Obviously, people, smallpox. Smallpox. No, they can weaponize uh, anything, but they could. Yeah. But yeah, but it, there has been synthesized, you know. Cases of smallpox and things like this since, um, mm-hmm. but the the last n- naturally occurring uh, uh, case of smallpox I believe was either seventy seven or seventy nine. So it's been a long time. Um, so are you interested in in what the other infectious disease that has been eradicated is? Um, hold on. Well, I mean. There's polio. Mm. Um, and oh, I know this. Oh, tell me, I can't remember. I got nothing. Oh, no worries, no worries. Um, A typhoid, for sure. Yeah. So, so interesting enough, polio has not been eradicated. Now, most people don't get polio. It's very rare these days. Okay. Fewer than 1,000 U.S. cases per year. But uh, it, it still does occur, though uh, it can, you know, it, it's preventable by vaccine. So most, most people don't get it because everyone gets a mm-hmm. polio, vac- a polio vaccine. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, okay. So, so no, polio is not, not polio. Okay. Interesting enough. The only other infectious disease that has been eradicated, uh, you know, deemed eradicated, I guess you should say, is a disease called Rinderpest. Vinderpest? Rinderpest? With what is R. it? Okay. Rind, yeah, rin, rinderpest. R i n d e r p e s t. Okay. And this is a cattle plague. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. This is a, a disease, uh, an infectious viral disease of cattle, domesticated buffalo, and other species of of even toed ungulates. If you like. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so. Buffalo, antelope, deers, giraffes, other things like that could get it as well. But uh, but uh, it it uh, after vaccinations and uh, immune immunizations and everything that went forth there, this has mm-hmm. been it was a global eradication campaign um, caused the last case of such to be diagnosed in 2001. So fairly um, uh, fairly new. Fairly new eradication. Hmm. Okay. Um, interesting enough, if we think about smallpox, smallpox is also the first disease to be eradicated, but also the first disease... Uh, to have a vaccine 
vaccines were created to mm-hmm. combat smallpox. There was no such thing as vaccines before that. So, do you do you know like the history of that? No, not really. I didn't really delve into that. Um, do you know the history of that? Um, yeah. So we studied a little bit about this and um, just uh, done a little. Uh, you know, obviously when I was vaccinated and stuff like that, kind of a little bit of research. Yeah. So um, smallpox and all different poxes and everything like that are Love all, them. yeah, they're all uh, the herpes virus, right? It's just a form of chicken pox and smallpox, cowpox, all that kind of different stuff. Mm, uh-huh. um, and so what they would do is they actually... Um, like initially would take the pustules from an affected person and like dry them out. And uh-huh. then they would like, um, just like you would just inhale them. So like you would just snort. I'm pretty sure you just snort dried pustules. And nice. what that, what that does is drying it out. Obviously, um, you know, it helps kill the virus, mm-hmm. but, and that is all a vaccine really is, is it's a uh, dead or weakened state of the uh, actual virus that gives your body the, uh, uh, your immune system, the recognition software, if you will. Right. And everything Basically like gives that. gives them the, mm-hmm. the, the skeleton, I guess you could say, of the virus. Yeah, so the blueprints reco- of the virus. Yeah, right. Exactly. So it can recognize mm-hmm. it when it's there and say, "You bad." Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah, and so um, then what they uh, started doing is they uh, started inoculating just under the skin. So they would um, they would take uh, cowpox or some other pustule similar um, and everything like that, and they would. Um, they would just cut a little, uh, ch- like cut cut into your arm and and put it in there, and that's why a lot of people with the smallpox scars. I mean, it kind of carried on for a while because you had to like dig it in and everything. So, right. like um, smallpox scars were really big and gross for a long time. But the crazy thing is to get it from like in 18th century to get it from Europe over to the new world over to the americas they had to keep the virus alive over this Uh, you know several week journey so they you know you you gotta you gotta think of the time here um they opted to get 22 orphans that they would essentially just like infect in sequence to um to, to get it to the going. new world, new world, so then they can, you know, harvest the the pustules to help inoculate it over in the new world. Yikes! That's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, that's that's kind of crazy when you think about it. But yeah. but yeah, that's I mean that's it. You had to have a living host basically because there's no refrigeration there's no you know and it's it's a disease that at that at that time you know didn't really it couldn't be transmitted from animals or anything like that that's like the weirdest thing this whole animal crossover like the fact that a tiger has coronavirus now is crazy it does yeah you didn't hear about that no i didn't know about that yeah so at the bronx zoo one of their tigers p- tested positive for uh, COVID nineteen. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how severe it is, obviously, and it kind of like the the other crazy thing with like diseases in general is the fact that like, did you ever read Guns, Germs, and Steel? Uh, the, no, no. So, um just one of the interesting things that they point out in that book is how, um, how Europe like, and Asia and stuff like that, like they just lived so close to their animals and they just domesticated animals. And that's where the, all these diseases started coming from. Like we just talked about like 
we get it from birds and then the birds we give it to the pigs and then the pigs give it back to us 10 times right. worse and everything like that it's because people are interacting they're um touching these animals all the time and all this kind of different stuff and so it's just this back and forth and back and forth whereas in the americas the reason that they were so susceptible to these diseases is because they they didn't have anything that domesticated so everything they had was just like you know um you know the occasional right. dog and you know stuff like that some um some animals they kept for food you know maybe right. but they didn't have they weren't breeding that, that yeah right exactly and so so when they you know their immune systems had not dealt with these you know things that have been given from fleas and back to rats and back to you and back to me and back to the right. pit you know all that kind of stuff and stuff so um so yeah it's just uh just kind of interesting that just the different lifestyle you know led to and you know europe survived being wiped out twice almost apparently 50 percent right. you know 50 yeah. percent at a time and you know however much smallpox and everything else and then bingo bango they just it just comes over and now it's the america's time to you know cull the herd i guess right so dude, that's crazy well I, I wanted to leave you with a couple of uh factoids um, well, first, I'm going to thank you. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I felt good. I learned a lot. Good. Um, and obviously, a lot of stuff that I did not know. <laughs> You're welcome. But, but yeah, good it stuff. Was, it was fun to look it up. And again, this is it was very surface uh, research, but mm-hmm. it was still like, uh, you know, not stuff that I'd really delved into before. Um, uh, now, I, me- I mentioned uh, earlier that the, the biggest problem you know, pandemic that the world has experienced is the bubonic plague, right? Right. The fourth being the plague of Justinian. Can you name the second and the third biggest pandemics? Hint, we've mentioned them today. Um, well, I'm definitely going to have to say um, swine flu, if it hit over a billion people, well, I guess this would be in death toll. Death toll. Okay. Death toll. Um, smallpox? Smallpox is number two, 56 okay. million. Okay. Um, and yeah, it have to be the yellow, then yellow fever, right? Or malaria? No. No, actually, uh, the third is Spanish flu. Oh, okay. Spanish flu, the most recent of the terrible uh, pandemics, again, 1918 to 1919, killed 40 to 50 million people. Jeez. Um, And when you compare that to... 40 to 50 million people in two years. Yeah. Yeah. So it affected, you know, it affected a third of the world's population. Um, mm-hmm. Fifty to, you know, where where swine flu uh, infected more, up to one point four billion, but only two hundred thousand people died. Two hundred uh, to five seventy five. In basically a hundred years, right? It's almost like exactly a hundred year cycle for that, and it's very close. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, it's more transmitted because people are airplane in and in huge cities right. and this, that, and the right. other. So more, many, 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 many more people got it, but it just didn't kill nearly as many. Interesting. And, and too, so I, I gotta... mean, you guys are going to think about it like people are also probably healthier now. Right. And there were then where if you got like a sick, you're just in many like, ways. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, King Jenny. Yeah. No. So I was just going to say that I got a list of 20 pandemics is what I'm looking at here. And yes, it's probably doesn't include all of them. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Spanish flu is third. Swine flu is 15th. Like, yeah, it's way it's mm-hmm. way at the bottom. Right. The the uh, 
the lowest the 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 twentieth is SARS with seven hundred and seventy people, mm-hmm. and MERS at eight fifty. So I was actually I was trying to compare SARS to um, to COVID nineteen just to kind uh-huh. of see, and it is a it is a similar virus and everything. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was just it was so much better contained. Basically, like um, I think it was only. 8,000 people were actually contracted it. And right. of that, as you said, about 800 people died. So it still had a 10% death toll. So which was like, oh, that's bad. So you said 80,000 people contracted it? No, eight. Oh, 8,000. Yeah, that's what it said. Maybe wow. Maybe. Well, yeah, it, I, compare, yeah. that, compare that to our current death toll of today. That's like a thousand times worse than what was contracted of SARS because we're at 82,000 yeah. deaths as of today. Yeah, exactly. And so that's like kind of the biggest thing is it, it um, were, yeah, so like 8,000 people contracted it worldwide, um, you know, reported obviously. And wow. yeah, only about 800 people died. So it almost had a 10% death toll. So it's like, yeah, we got to we got to lock this down and nip it down, but they yeah. did it and contained yeah. it. Mm-hmm. But so, so, at, so as of today, like I said, we're at 82,000 deaths. Mm-hmm. We are creeping up on yellow fever. We will, Ooh. I, we will definitely be, either be right in there or may pass yellow fever, yellow fever. And, and this is talking, which just number like is it? The eight, the, the late 1800s yellow fever was 100 to 150,000 deaths. But which number is it on the 20? List of 20? Uh, yellow fever is 17. Oh, okay. No, 20, 16, excuse me. Okay. Mm-hmm. 16. So, so COVID-19 right now. Bump is, it down to 17. So. Is, uh, <laughs> It, so COVID right now is seventeen. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, um. So yeah, going from lowest to highest, we got SIRS, 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 MERS, Ebola, mm-hmm. and then uh, COVID nineteen, and then yellow fever. So, um. So if we get past one hundred fifty k, we're passing up yellow fever. If we get past a 200k deaths then we pass swine flu Mm -hmm. so um, that's crazy and I think I think we could easily do both unfortunately Uh, so we'll we'll have to see we'll have to see how it goes but uh, hopefully we don't go to the next one which is the 18th century great plagues which killed 600,000 people (laughs) Hopefully Ooh, that's, we don't get that high. That's quite the threshold. It's pretty big <laughs> yeah. of a jump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. So just just remember, everybody, we we got past those. <laughs> we, you know, and 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 we are much much better prepared as the swine flu dictates. We are much better prepared now than we were. Uh, a hundred years ago, fifty years ago, shoot, you know, right? Like, so, um, so yeah, like, so I, just, yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated at the, like, this point in, in technology, makes it so we are, we are still chugging along, right? Right. A lot of things are taking a hit, you know, but still, like the fact that you can order food on an app. And that and somebody could come to your house with no map, you know, or like, you know, no directions kind of a thing. Right. Like. Right. It, it, it and and it gives way to our world continuing on. Whereas if it was like I keep thinking it's like the 1950s, you know, because like stores close at like six o'clock now. Right. And like they're not open right. on Sundays and stuff like that. And so I'm like, man. In the 1950s, though, I think like a lockdown like this would would have been fine. People would have had enough food and, you know, 
they may not have been able to go to work, but like everything may not have been like as supposedly dire as it is now. Right. But if this was like the 90s where people lived the way they kind of live today, but without the technology, we'd be screwed. <laughs> we would be we'd be having a hard time. And I just yeah. can't I keep thinking about like Spanish flu, like during mm-hmm. the eight, you know, it, part of that was during World War One. So yep. people have limited resources anyways. Yeah. And now and now they're dealing with this where they can't leave their houses. They might not be able to work. Uh and mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people didn't make it. Like the mm-hmm. world probably screeched to a halt, and it was just. And where most of most of us can work remotely, or not most of us, but a lot of us can work remotely, and and mm-hmm. uh, and and still get some stream of income coming. Where those people, you know, if they worked on the factory, they factory closed down, and they had nothing. Nothing. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah man, exactly. Better prepared to do this. Unfortunately, we probably should have been better prepared to shut it down so that it, it, we could we could have nipped it a little earlier. Um, yeah, this is this but. is kind of this is, and you'll you'll understand this analogy. This is like the the running a marathon analogy. Yeah, if you are training for a marathon or any kind of race, any kind of like physical endurance thing, we're going to say that there's like a hundred suck points, like where it just sucks. Right. right? And if you, if you start running early and you like do your, your couple of miles and couple of miles, then it sucks a little bit. And then right. it sucks a little bit. So you're taking one suck point at a time. <laughs> and <laughs> then when you get to the marathon, you got like one last suck point because you've trained, you've done like a 20 miler, you know, you're ready. And like, you know, you're going to hit the wall at like t- mile 22, but you're going to get past it because that's that last suck point, And right. the marathon's going to be fine. It's just going to be like your training. Or right. <laughs> you can sit there on your butt and wait until it's like two weeks out and be like crap i need to actually try to run and do it and then you're going to try to run 10 miles and it's going to be 20 suck points all at once and it's going to (laughs) be terrible and then you're going to say well i still got to get out there and run so you run the next weekend and it's going to be 20 and then you still have 60 suck points to get you through (laughs) that you're going to have to suffer through this marathon and I feel it's almost kind of the opposite for this thing. If we had shut it down hard for like a solid three weeks, like a two-week gestation of everybody like, do you have it? If you haven't interacted with anybody in two weeks and you don't show symptoms, you don't have it. But we're going to send an extra week just to be sure. Right. And like no interactions at all, then we'd be in the clear by right. now but right. the fact that we limped it out and i'm guilty of it as much as a lot of people and you know right still went to the grocery store and still went to you know get stuff from the restaurants or whatever and now we're just gonna have to suffer through another month and a half because yeah you know, at least we're not right we're not, shut, we're not shut down enough so well, it's it's interesting. My wife's telling me she watched Contagion, which Ooh, yeah, <laughs> you should. I haven't watched it. I've I've seen it, but I haven't watched it recently. But apparently, uh-huh. there's so many parallels. They did very good research for that movie. Um, and one of the guys that wrote that movie was interviewed, and he about this whole situation. You know, mm-hmm. and he's like, when we were doing our research. We thought, obviously, the 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 reality of something like this happening was very good and very high, um, but we did not think the reality of us, the richest, most prepared country in the world, would be the worst affected because we didn't do the right things early enough. Well, I don't know. Italy has a huge death toll compared to the U.S., but yes, they—they they, uh, they yes, 
but they don't have as many people infected as we do. Right. And yeah, that's because yeah, that's the biggest thing is just like, again, it's, it's the same kind of thing with like the economy and stuff like that. It's like, Oh, we got to keep the economy going. It's like, if the economy again had shut down for three weeks, then we'd be up and running. Right. But it's the fact that we're just barely keeping it, keeping it going that it's like, and that's, that's kind of what China did is China was just like, nope, like you, like everybody's on lockdown. Like, right. We're, we're done. And now it's like now, and they flatline their numbers and stuff like that. And so, right. Well, here's, here's his perspective. So Italy obviously is a smaller country. They had, uh, they, as of today, 135,000 confirmed cases, 17,000 mm-hmm. deaths. We're at 400,000 confirmed cases with 12,000 deaths. We're going to surpass their number for sure just on statistics alone. Like, because we have a t- almost more than double the amount of confirmed cases as they do. Yeah, but that's, that's what I was looking at because I – was looking at the the death toll percentages ours is less than two percent where italy's is upwards of like ten percent and like you know some of the other european countries you know germany's it's like under one percent and stuff like that so like i don't know it's it's kind of a like i i think it's interesting too in the fact that um even when you look at like the numbers of people tested that don't have it and stuff like that. Like, um, it's like, if you have the symptoms and you go get tested, you only have like a 10%, less than 10% chance. It's like maybe like a 5% chance of actually having it. Right. Anyway. So yeah, it is interesting. Yes. I agree with you. Like we have way more cases, which means we're way more exposed and that's bad. (laughs) Right. But But just like as resources go, go as like a country, money mm-hmm. and things like this like we should be leading the pack with mm-hmm. using our resources to keep our economy going while we shut things down which is right. not what has happened but anyways that was yeah. i think his point uh the the writer of contagion's point like we could have got ahead of this we saw this and, coming right like we definitely saw it coming and we did very little (laughs) right yeah so anyways um seemed a little preachy i didn't mean to be anyways (laughs) (laughs) well i mean that's the thing is we we only have our history to look back on and you know right that is it is what it is i mean half of europe just by not washing their hands and you know right all that kind of stuff just died out and so we got to make sure that we're we're doing better than that right nice. well that's fun <laughs> yeah well i'll say thanks for thanks for playing my game thanks for giving me the chance to look into this stuff and give you a few quizzy nuggets of information so no i um thoroughly enjoyed it i hope everybody at home played along and uh you know if you're yelling at me because it's always both. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting to see that you know the same thing you know comes back and things come yeah, back like, around. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, if I mean, it's not is... smallpox, it's coming back. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm good. I, <laughs> yeah. Unless You're I got the placebo. <sighs> oh, that's stupid. Good. Double blind crappy <laughs> studies. <laughs> Good luck, man. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. Um, I think that was the thing is with the flu vaccine, they said, like, at the end of it, they'll tell you if you got the placebo or not because they you need you need to go get a real one. You, yeah. <laughs> They're like, um, yeah, you we can't tell you right now. But... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, everybody, uh, that is uh, one of our famous gaming ep- game episodes. Uh, yeah. And we are excited to do another one. So if you have any suggestions on what kind of game we should play, uh, you can reach us at tag nbrando 
T-A-G-G-N-B-R-A-N-D-O at gmail.com and uh, also on the Twitter and the Instagram. Yes, sir. But uh, keep it indoors, keep safe, and check out our back catalog if you want. <laughs> yeah, if you're bored. <laughs> yeah. If you're stuck cleaning your house uh, for the third time, like some of us, then uh, do it up. Yeah, if you want to get your mind off of this whole thing and you want to do pandemics, <laughs> jump back to episode three where we talk about trick-or-treating and its origins. Yep, that's good stuff. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right.